Not once in my long career has an untruth crossed my lips. You ever tell a lie? Even a little one? Is technology making it easier for us to lie? Or maybe nothing ever changes and dishonesty is just a timeless part of human nature. Dishonesty might be so widespread because we're so easily fooled. Charles Ponzi began lying to his investment clients in the early 1900s. And he couldn't stop even after he'd been to prison three times for fraud. 18th century journalist Daniel Defoe invented as many facts as he reported and did time for slander. What drives some liars to reach pathological levels of deceit? Since lying requires a lot more information gathering than telling the truth, Yowling and her colleagues conjectured that the brains of pathological liars might have more white matter pathways. Brain scans proved them right. Liars had about 25% increase in white matter compared to healthy individuals. The brain stores our memories and knowledge in gray matter cells. But another type of neuron, the white matter cell, creates connections between all that information. Whenever we tell a story, whether it's true or not, we have to gather details from gray matter cells in different parts of the brain. It's like gleaning information from a series of books. The books are the gray matter, filled with the knowledge that you need to fit together into a compelling narrative. The aisles that lead from book to book are the white matter. Imagine going to a bookstore to get 10 different books that are scattered across different areas of the bookstore. Having multiple pathways that leads you to the books will help you get to the books more easily and quickly. The human brain works in a very similar fashion when you have more connections between various parts of the brain that will make it easier for you to retrieve important information. So having more white matter allows all this information to be retrieved and be used in a much faster. Isn't technology making it easier for us to deceive one another? Is there a way to tell what's true and what's not online? If I wanted to call in sick in the old days, I'd need to psych myself up and get my sick voice on. Nowadays, we can type a message about feeling sick, no voice, no vocal cues, no nonverbal cues, hit send, and my lie's done. Do we use our gadgets to lie more or less than in old-fashioned face-to-face talks? Things like email, there's actually a lot less lying than people expect. The main reason, I think, is that there's a record. We evolved to talk and have it disappear. And now we're in a radically new era. If I write you an email, not only have I created a record for myself, I've given you a record. That record can be copied, it can be searched, it can be shared. According to Jeff, we lie the most when we ditch our gadgets all together and talk to each other face to face. Why? perhaps because we are really bad at spotting lies. But a new device may help us catch a liar every time. John has spent the last 30 years studying lies, and this experiment is designed to test a device that may one day make lying impossible. The subjects receive secret agent-style instructions, a mysterious envelope, and directions from a computerized voice. You are an innocent participant in this experiment. Please wait outside the building for 20 minutes before returning to the lab. The other student receives a diabolical assignment. You must steal $20 from the purse. You must have an alibi prepared. You will not receive full credit if you are caught. An infrared eye tracker able to spot microscopic dilations and contractions of the pupils. The changes that we're seeing in the size of the pupil are very tiny. They're less than a tenth of a millimeter. 
but this subject looks like they didn't have a difficult time answering these questions, and the pupil data look like we would expect from a truthful individual. Did the thieves' pupils dilate when answering the same questions? They're showing stronger reactions to the questions about the $20. So I'd say there's a good chance the subject's in a guilty group. But how did pupil dilation help John catch the thief? John knows that when our brains go into overdrive with mental effort, our pupils dilate involuntarily. And since deception is more complicated than telling the truth, the male student's brain had to work harder. He couldn't hide his lying eyes. John's ocular deception device is already 85% accurate. The accuracy of John's lie detector will too. That means the accuracy of John's device could one day reach 100%. Imagine a future where a person with a cell phone or smart eyewear could use a miniaturized version of John's device on anyone they're talking to. Would the whole truth and nothing but the truth bring us closer together or tear us apart?